Here is a very efficient vault. What's happening here? This pole doesn't bounce down here and bounce back up to bend. It's, he's not bouncing the pole to bounce it and throw it to vertical. Do you see him throwing this pole to vertical? No, it's a soft top arm here. It's not even straight. If it was locked out and straight, it would slow his shoulders down here. But he maintains speed through the plant. The bottom arm is not locked out here. It's long because he's holding a pole so high that it's so far out there. It's long, but it's not locked out. Look at the lead knee. This isn't jumping straight up. It's not trying to jump the pole to vertical. It's not rowing the hand up to vertical. It's about loading the pole. The more you jump up here, the less the pole is going to bend. It's all about bending the pole, loading the pole, transferring more energy into the pole. And to do that, there's a slight tilt here to put the weight up high here in the shoulders. As the takeoff, look at the top arm swings into the core of the pole. It's soft there. That way the top arm swings quickly into the short of the pole. Some would think his hips are collapsing. No, his hips are back because it's in relationship to the core of the pole. His hips are back. And if you look at this angle, his knees back behind the hips. And if you look at the thigh there, the legs behind that. Here's the same thing. The lead leg is back. It's not driving up here and trying to jump up. It's trying to collapse into the pole. And it's a sequence of moves. This is not a stretch reflex. This is a sequence of moves. This goes, then the hips, then the knees, then the feet. And by both these legs down here, that creates thrust down the core of the pole. When you do this in sequence, it has to be a sequence. It can't be this and this. It's not rowing the top hand. It's not pushing down the pole with the top hand. It's not rowing. The only hand pressure there is, is to keep the top arm in the core of the pole so the shoulders are always driving down the core of the pole. So this is a sequence of moves. It creates thrust down the core of the pole. It transfers muscle energy, not just speed, but muscle energy through a sequence of moves. It transfers muscle energy down the cord. It shortens this lever length that moves everything forward. It's not the top arm is the only thing moving it forward. The only pressure on this hand here is to keep the shoulders in the cord of the pole so the shoulders can drive down the cord. And this tap is so hard, that pole's going to bend away. It's not that so much that the top arm is doing it. It's this, it's that hanging from the top hand into the cord of the pole. And from here, it's a sequence of moves. It's not shoving randomly the top hand forward. There is no such thing as push down the pole. No, it's hanging. The top arm is always hanging down the cord of the pole. The sequence of moves is from the bottom up. And it has to be all the way up to perpendicular to the core of the pole, which drives energy that way, which drives the top hand, shoulders, and hips down the core of the pole. That transfers energy into the pole. It shortens the lever length. Everything moves forward. It's not this random pushing over or over pushing the hand. There's no such thing as pushing down the pole. No. The top arm is rotating. The hand pressure is to keep the shoulders in the core of the pole. If you push too far, now the shoulders are going to be pointed down that way. No, we want the shoulders driving down the core of the pole. And to do that, the legs have to kick all the way up to there, all the way up to perpendicular. If the legs only kick to there, like Bubka did, Bubka was trying to do giants on the pole. That's why he released the pole early. He only, at his best, kicked to there. And that sends everything spinning in a circle. And spinning in a circle creates wobble, a back and forth action. It releases energy from the pole. So the legs come all the way up to there, into that direction. And then as the hips rise, the shoulders drive down the core of the pole. 
and the hips are going up the cord of the pole. As the hips rise, the legs meet up with the top hand, the shoulders are still down the cord of the pole, and he extends up the cord of the pole while his shoulders are driving down the cord of the pole. He's not spinning around this pole. You never want to be on this side of the pole. You always want to be between the top arm, the cord of the pole, and the crossbar. If this long lever's on this side, it's going to start to rotate slowly like this, like a high jumper would take off in a high jump. If it was wrapped around on this side, the pole's pushing up this way, it would push the pole vaulter back down towards the runway, and then the vaulter would have to waste energy to go back in the other direction. So it's extending up the cord of the pole, getting between the pole and the crossbar. Now that slow rotation starts of this long lever, the shoulder turns onto the top hand, not staying down here and spinning around, but you go up. And if you load the pole, this is not a power move. The pole is going to launch you up. You turn your shoulder onto your top hand. This long lever starts to rotate. You don't have to shoot towards over the bar. The legs drop over the bar. That shortens this lever length. Here's the long lever. Like a high, jumping, high jumper arching over the bar. The pole vaulter pikes over the bar. The pole vaulter actually is driving their center mass lower than the bar to go over the bar. That's how to make a very efficient pole vault.